Helicopters are one of the most dangerous modes of transport on the planet. A helicopter crashing into the Atlantic Ocean, narrowly missing crowds of beachgoers. Some of them are built for complex military and rescue operations. But in poor weather, even the most advanced helicopters can be grounded. So how do pilots land them in rough conditions? And what happens if the engine fails? Welcome to Explained. Helicopters are designed with the most advanced aviation technology. They're capable of handling complex operations and crazy maneuvers. But they're harder to fly than airplanes, and maneuvering them in bad weather over tough terrain can be extremely challenging. Let's look at two extreme situations, starting with landing on ships in rough seas. This can be particularly challenging because ships aren't just moving forward, they're rocking from side to side. And then there's heavy wind and the air wake from the ship's superstructure to consider. Once a pilot is confident that he's within the ship helicopter operating limits, a device called the Bear Trap comes into play. This device was created by the Royal Canadian Navy in the late 1950s to early 60s, and different versions of it are still used today. Here's how it works. The pilot lowers a probe to the ship. Then, the flight deck crew attach it to a winch below the deck through the center of the bear trap. The cable tension is increased, and the helicopter starts to synchronize with the ship, like a little dance. The pilot then starts to decrease power as the cable tension increases, and when the helicopter is low enough, the winch pulls the main probe into the bear trap to secure it. There are newer versions of this, like Curtis Wright's advanced handling technology called the SYST, that don't risk ship crew falling overboard in stormy weather. The deck lock system is another alternative and it uses a specially designed steel grid in the middle of the flight deck. When a pilot lands on it, a locking harpoon clamps down and secures the helicopter to the deck. But in 2017, the Chinese came out with technology so advanced it could literally land a helicopter automatically. To keep it simple, it uses GPS navigation to get the helicopter closer to the ship. Then, laser sensors adjust the position of the helicopter to the ship with an error range of just a few inches. And it lands automatically and safely on board. Flying over mountains is beautiful but sudden changes in weather can quickly turn this dream into a nightmare. Landing at high altitudes in bad weather is challenging and requires a highly skilled pilot and a special high altitude helicopter. Pilots usually identify elephant footprints, which are safe spots for them to land in an emergency, but there are fewer of these on a mountain. Cliff edges are particularly challenging and sometimes landing is impossible because of unstable rocks and high wind. And if the mountain is covered in snow, there's a chance of causing an avalanche. Look at over the top! Over the top! Woo! When landing is impossible during a rescue operation, pilots hover as low as possible, tip the chopper at an angle, and the rescue crew get to work and help people climb in. A team scrambling out to get those rescuers. But the higher you go, the trickier it gets. And besides insane wind speed, the density of air becomes a problem. When the air density is low, helicopter blades can't produce enough lift to take off or sustain a flight. Most high altitude helicopters can safely fly as high as 7,620 meters, about 25,000 feet. But there have been two instances where pilots have pushed these limits. If you wanna see more videos like this, hit that like button and subscribe to Explained. In 2005, a French fighter pilot named Didier Delsal attempted something no one had dared to try before, because the risk of crashing is astronomical. 
After getting Eurocopter to agree to his idea, he tested his theory by flying their chopper to 8,991 meters. This was nearly 2,000 meters above its maximum operating altitude and 150 meters higher than Everest. Then, to extend the flight time, he lowered the weight of it by getting rid of the extra stuff like passenger seats. And after scouting the mountain for days, he made his attempt. But it was a lot tougher than he expected. One side of the mountain had a powerful downdraft of wind which pushed the helicopter backwards. And on the other side, there was an updraft so strong it made controlling the ascent a huge challenge. Didier finally managed to touch down on a tiny area at the peak of Mount Everest for 3 minutes and 50 seconds. Another insane record was set by Fred North in South Africa in March 2002. But this was for the highest altitude in a helicopter without a touchdown. After months of preparation, installing a more powerful engine and fitting in oxygen equipment, Fred pushed the chopper to 12,954 meters. That's 42,500 feet. That's a little more than one and a half times the height of Mount Everest. But there was a massive scare on the way when the engine shut down and had to be restarted. So what happens with complete engine failure? Surprisingly, they don't fall like a rock through the sky. When the engine stops producing power to rotate the main blades and the tail blades, the pilot has to activate the auto-rotation system. As the helicopter enters auto-rotation, it starts to descend. The upflowing air from the descent keeps the main rotor system turning and stores energy. And right before landing, the pilot uses this energy to lower the speed of the descent and ensures a smooth touchdown. Now for malfunctions at sea, the pilot's procedure is different. If helicopters can't land on deck, option one is to refuel and land on shore if it's not too far away. But if there's a complete engine failure at sea, pilots have to land as safely as possible in the water, again using auto-rotation. Then pilots and crew must escape the sinking vehicle using their helicopter underwater egress training. This training is intense, and it teaches pilots and crew how to keep calm and think underwater. First, they train in a shallow water egress trainer. They are strapped to a seat and flipped upside down and learn to escape through a window. When they're ready, they put this training to the test in daylight and nighttime scenarios in the dumper. However, unfortunate occasions where helicopters have met with horrific accidents. Honolulu, this is near the USS Arizona Memorial there at Pearl Harbor. In fact, helicopters have a crash rate of 9.84 per 100,000 hours, meaning for every hour in the air, helicopters crash approximately 35% more often than the average aircraft. But with aviation technology constantly evolving and with pilot training intensifying, this statistic can drop significantly lower. Have you ever been in a helicopter? What was it like? Tell us about it in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to explain.